to 13 Days of Christmas Cooking, featuring the Sorors of the Stone Mountain Lithonia Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I am Tanika Vincent, Chair of the Arts and Letters Committee for the 21-23 Sororal Term. It is my honor, my, my privilege uh, to bring this series uh, to our Sorors and uh, members of our community uh, we wanted so much to share um, some special holiday cheer given um, that our fellowship now, given COVID, uh, has to be somewhat limited. So we hope you enjoy the series. Uh, there are 12 other episodes after this, and each episode is filled with so much good food. Oh, I can't wait myself. And uh, a lot of fun, a lot of good time. So we are very excited uh, to present our favorite holiday recipes to you. Today's episode features Thanksgiving leftovers. If you are like me, you are so tired of those big, heavy plates. The food was good. You spent three days in the kitchen preparing it all. And now here you are the day after Thanksgiving and you just want to try something different. And so with that, this episode, I thought it'd be a great idea to share with you um, some of my ideas of what you can do with your Thanksgiving leftovers. And so now let's step to the stove to see what I've got for you. As you can see here, I have uh, some good looking ingredients here, but the main thing here, this is what is left of the smoked turkey. And here, kind of broke it up, cleaned all the meat uh, off the bone or a lot of it, I should say, because there's still some meat on the bone. A lot of that good fat in there from the skin. I put the bone in the pot and I probably filled the pot with about three quarters to the edge of water. And I just let it boil. I added some dry seasonings to the pot in addition to some bouillon. So I have some chicken bouillon some uh, roasted garlic bouillon, some minced garlic, adobo. I don't think anything is good unless it's been made with adobo. Adobo is just the Spanish version of, I'll call it, um, like an all-purpose seasoning, seasoned salt type of experience. Um, I have some herb onion seasoning um, that I purchased from Pampered Chef. In addition to, here I have a mixture of um, this is some dried fennel with some celery flakes, sage, Italian seasoning, poultry seasoning. And I just kind of um, mixed it all together along with some uh, ground bay leaf. And all of that has gone into this pot. Now, I put it in. I'm walking away to go uh, to make some other items. But what can you do with this bone broth, this stock, when it's done? So much. You could use it as the base for soup. Here, as you can see, I have some, well, I call the whole, it's the holy trinity. I think we all in our homes uh, have diced onion, celery, green pepper. Um, this is some cubed uh, sweet potato. And then I have what is left of the green beans. Uh, seasoned with uh, smoked turkey parts. And so all of that can go into the pot to make a, a hearty soup. Thicken it up a little bit with a little cornstarch and water and uh, put it in a pie crust and cover it with another pie crust and you can have a really good turkey pot pie with all of the, uh, you can see there's still some, some meat here on the bone with the meat that is left on the bone. That would make a for a really good uh, turkey pot pie filling. And so that's just one thing you can do. It's not a lot of effort. It doesn't require a lot of time in the kitchen. Once you put the bone in the water, you walk away and let it boil for about 30 minutes or so. You can add all your stuff to it and walk away from it. You can put it in a crock pot and cook. So you have lots of options in terms of what you are able to do with the stock uh, from the the turkey bone that you used for Thanksgiving. 
Okay. Here we are just checking out the ingredients that we're using today. Uh, we have here some leftover dressing. We have some sliced sandwich bread. Look in here is a sneak preview of our peanut butter and cranberry jelly sandwich made with this press from Pampered Chef. And of course, a little bit of leftover macaroni and cheese along with some of what's left of our fried turkey and then our sweet ham. We have some sliced cheese here. Um, also peanut butter, a few marshmallows, and my homemade, look I left the cranberry there so you could see for real, for real it is homemade. Um, this is, I'll call it my cranberry jelly. It's a combination of the canned um, cranberry sauce along with um, some boiled cranberries and a little bit of uh, cranberry walnut chutney um, that I've had in a in a jar and so I combined all of it and added um, some sugar to make a cranberry uh, preserve slash jelly and so we're going to use these ingredients for some quick easy leftover ideas you can use um, in case you're tired of those big heavy meals that you've been eating and uh, you need some fresh ideas Maybe even something that you can do with the kids. So, if you're ready, let's get started with how you can use your Thanksgiving leftovers. Okay, so, um, we've got all of our ingredients laid out, and we are going to start with um, what I feel is something easy, especially something you can do with the kids. Um, the kids are probably hollering about how they're tired of eating the same stuff over and over again. So, uh, we're going to start with... Um, Let's call it a bougie fluff and nutter. I am from New England, and if you know anything about New England, you know the fluff and nutter. I feel like the fluff and nutter um, sandwich originated back home. <laughs> the fluff and nutter, if you've never heard of a fluff and nutter, a fluff and nutter is simply peanut butter with marshmallow fluff. Um, at least I think they sell fluff here in the South, or maybe I'm not even sure if they even still make fluff. But um, fluff is uh, just marshmallow, and um, you put peanut butter and marshmallow on the bread. You make it really thick and gooey, and it's it's a really good, hearty, very sweet sandwich. And so we're gonna make a fanciful fluff and nutter. So I'm starting with um, some peanut butter, um, and if you are uh, able and you want to um, interact in the chat. What kind of peanut butter do you like? Are you a creamy kind of person or chunky? I'm not even gonna lie, I am so anti-chunky. I'm all about that skippy, creamy, smooth peanut butter. And now I see that they use the natural uh, peanut butter in um, a lot of uh, recipes and things. And I was so happy when I discovered that Skippy made natural peanut butter. Awesome. So, real quick, you're just going to smooth your peanut butter on your bread. Um, I'm using wide pan bread for a reason, and I'm going to show you um, in one minute why. So, I smoothed my peanut butter on my bread. And now, I'm just going to grab the marshmallows that I used for my sweet potato souffle uh, for my Thanksgiving presentation. These are the leftover marshmallows. And I just have a few here, and I'm just going to put them right on top of the peanut butter. And again, this is something um, fun uh, that you could do with the kids. Something um, very easy to do. Very, it's going to be very sweet. And so I put the peanut butter, marshmallows in the center of the bread and made the sandwich. So now... Um, I have a lot of friends who are so into Pampered Chef that they have convinced me to purchase from all of them. And so from one of them, I purchased this Pampered Chef um, sandwich press. And I was so excited when it came in, like Christmas. 
Uh, I, I couldn't wait to use it. And so I put the sandwich together and now I'm going to use this sandwich press. And what's going to happen when I uh, put the sandwich press on the bread, see, make sure you can see that what's happening here. And then I'm going to press down. And when I press down, it makes the kind of sandwich that will be pressed together. And I'm using this knife just to make sure it cuts. And so now I'm gonna break the crust away. And what I will have left, so let me make this look a little neater here. What I will have left will be sandwich that is pressed very much like an empanada or um, a Jamaican beef patty now I have this peanut butter sand peanut butter um, marshmallow fluffiner sandwich um, inside and I can eat it as it is or this is the best part I can grill it on the stove like it was a grilled cheese sandwich and a little butter or bake it in the oven so it gets nice and crispy on the outside and inside it gets melty and gooey. Oh, yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And here, um, this is the magic of, the magic of television. <laughs> um, I've already made one uh, peanut butter and instead of marshmallow, what I used was a homemade uh, cranberry jelly. So I used um, the canned cranberry sauce along with some fresh cranberries and a little cranberry walnut chutney and added um, a few tablespoons of sugar, mixed it all together to make a jelly. And that is what I put in this sandwich. So now I have these sandwiches and I'm going to um, put one of them in the stove. I'm going to put one on the grill and... Um, We'll see what it looks like all at the end. So good. Okay, so now that um, we've prepared our peanut butter and cranberry jelly sandwich and our um, fluff another, now we're going to move on to another sandwich that I think is really creative. And it's not my original recipe. I actually um, got the idea from a segment I saw on a cooking show. Um, but it is so good. I thought it was an ingenious idea because it involves using your leftover dressing. Up, oh, get to the chat. I'm gonna start some controversy. Is it dressing? Is it stuffing? What is it? In my house, it's dressing. <laughs> and so with my leftover dressing, I have, um, And so, now, I'm about to start some controversy. In the chat, what do you call it? Dressing or stuffing? In my house, it's dressing. And we're about to make some sandwiches using the leftover dressing. Now, I'm not even going to lie. The dressing is my favorite part, especially when I drench it in gravy and my dressing, I think, is the best dressing of all dressings I've ever tasted. I'm not biased. <laughs> um, but I, I make, from scratch, um, sausage and sage dressing. And I basically use um, bread, loaf of bread, whatever bread pretty much I have in the house. Um, but what I used yesterday uh, for Thanksgiving was a combination of um, whole wheat bread, uh, cornbread, um, some sugar-free bread, and then, you know, did y'all know that Cheesecake Factory makes loaf bread? Well, I 
got some and I had a few extra slices and I just threw that out. I threw all the breads that I had um, for the most part in my dressing. Made my dressing with my stock and all of my, my goodies inside and so it was so amazing. Um, the sausage that I used is chicken and turkey sausage and the stock was a combination it was chicken and garlic and very similar to the stock that I make for um, my soup. Uh, so with that, I've got my dressing here. So I'm just going to take, I took up just a little bit, a few, uh, I would say probably about two cups of dressing. And I'm just, I'm taking the back of a spoon and I'm just kind of flattening it out to make it um, a, like a rectangular shape. And as I am making it, as you can see, it's nice and, and moist. So it's uh, sticking together uh, very nicely. And I'm just doing this uh, quickly so that you can see what this looks like. Okay. So now with this, um, I can use turkey. I'm just going to layer my turkey meat in the top of it here. I'm also going to, we're about to make this uh, dressing sandwich club <laughs> with a little ham and turkey. Layer that on top. And... Um, I love cheese. I think cheese makes everything great. I'm just going to use a, a, a slice of cheese here. Put it on top. So now I'm going to use my spatula to kind of cut this in half a little bit. And now I've got this other half. So this is going to be the top half of the sandwich. Press that together. Make sure it doesn't fall apart. But even if it does fall apart, honey, it don't even matter. It's all going to the same place. Don't even matter. So now I've got this dressing sandwich. Let's see here. That I am about to you can see that, and so you can see on the inside, you can see the layer of ham and cheese and turkey, um, along with the fluff and nutter and cranberry, uh, peanut butter and cranberry jelly, um, pressed sandwiches or empanadas. We're going to step to the stove, grill these up with a little bit of butter. So now we are here at the stove. I've gone ahead and placed my sandwiches on the grill, but I have, now I'm going to use just a pat of butter. Get that going. And so, you see I have my fluff and nutter here. I'm going to grill it and slide in a little butter. I've got my turkey and ham club dressing sandwich club club sandwich and just like we would for a grilled cheese or any other type of grilled uh, sandwich we're just gonna let it sit in the butter let it get nice and golden brown and crusty and um, let the cheese in the uh, turkey and ham dressing club <laughs> sandwich. Let all that melt together and let all of the marshmallow and peanut butter kind of ooze together in the middle of our sandwich and it's gonna be really good when it's done. Sandwich has gotten a little golden brown on it and so I normally um, <laughs> would choose one sandwich uh, just for the sake of the show, for the sake of time. Um, I uh, 
kind of put them in the same on the same skillet but um, the heat is gonna melt all of that together and it's gonna be really good <laughs> now through the magic of TV <laughs> and cameras um, my sandwiches are nice and, and crispy golden brown um, what I do want to show you though my fluff a nutter one one can you can you guys see this here how nice and gooey it is on the inside. Hold on, let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see. So I cracked it open a little bit just so you can see all of that marshmallowy. Oh yeah, <laughs> that marshmallowy goodness inside that has melted and just like a s'more, only with peanut butter. Oh, it's so it's. So good. And so the last thing that I want to uh, share with you, something so easy, um, I'm sure many of you are already doing it. Let's step back over to uh, the island to see what I got cooking. And lastly, real quick, um, we've got some leftover macaroni and cheese, which was so creamy and good. And remember, again, cheese is definitely of God. Yes, it is. Um, you can add pretty much anything to this to make it something new or to reimagine it. So um, anything from the turkey to the ham, lobster, um, spinach, uh, any number of things. And so in this case, I'm just going to add um, a few uh, strips of ham. We're going to mix this all together. We're going to add a uh, crumble, a little more cheese, a little more shredded cheese on the top, and we're going to put it in the oven. And it only needs to bake. It only needs to bake maybe five minutes or so. Eight, maybe eight minutes at the most if you want that kind of bubbly, extra bubbly um, experience to make sure it's hot and, and warm throughout. But... Yes, you're just gonna take this. You're just gonna take this. Now that you've added your ham to the macaroni and cheese and put it in the oven, bake it um, at 375 for about, I'd give it five minutes or so, maybe eight minutes at the most. Um, so then, then you're gonna have a reinvented uh, macaroni and cheese via ham mac and cheese or lobster or whatever it is that you add. And so that concludes uh, this episode of day one with the 13 days of Christmas cooking, what to do with your Thanksgiving leftovers. I am Tanika Vincent, and I'll see you on another episode. Take care.